good tip. Don't forget that step. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you have cyber rooms too. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. It's, it's, if, when we get around to the front, it's like the important part, I'm going to have to actually like grease up his eyelashes so that it doesn't stick to his eyes. But I'm not going to do that right away because once I do that, he's not going to want to actually open his eyes because it's all gun gunky. Uh, so most, I'm just going to do the parts that matter the most for the back half now, and we'll we'll get to greasing the front half when we start, just before we start doing that side. This uh, really well, it works really quite nicely as an exfoliant. <laughs> uh, it will clean the pores. Yes. Some people get a little claustrophobic about it, but most people find it really relaxing. They, like I've had people almost fall asleep. Okay, let's start. Let's get started. Okay. Don't fall asleep. Oh, no. You can't. That's I'll get pictures of you asleep. Okay. You just want so, pic pictures of the Yeah, just pictures. Of the yeah, what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So I sort of start by sort of establishing my edge. I folded this one over lengthwise so it's a little more solid. Lay it down. You sort of rub it so that the, 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 the little bits of uh, plaster that are in the bandage sort of settle onto the surface. You get a smoother inner surface that way. He said the wrinkles on the cap doesn't matter? Well, you'll end up with a, with a, a mold that has wrinkles in it, but that's going to be covered by the plaster sculpt anyway, right? Um, so overlap it a little bit. Overlap it like a little bit more, come down. And as you can see, we're sort of wearing grungy kind of clothing, yeah. just always yeah, yeah. good idea. He's going to get some like drips of water down the back of his neck and so on. And, Oh, isn't that chilling? Yeah, yeah. Well, we it's <laughs> ideally you want to use warm water, mostly for the comfort of the person. Uh, the the the, pro, the chemical process that that hardens this stuff actually does give all a little bit of heat, so these bandages will warm up a little bit. Generally, it's not it's it's not like it's not like they heat up. They actually do warn you. They say they say you know be careful. It might you know it's not going to burn you, but it might get uncomfortably warm. I've never had that be an issue with like in the years that I've done this stuff. I've had Actually, this, maybe once. I've had this stuff on my face, like I've gone through this process on the face and on the chest, yeah. and it was only once, and I think it was because the water was way too warm. Yeah. That it increased the warmth of yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. Worst I got was a little rash. Yeah. Have you done this on yourself? Well, I, as I said, the first time I did it, I did it on myself. I didn't do this two-piece mold. I did uh, a single, like I did just the front only, I was clean shaven at the time, from the chin up to about here, just like one piece. Uh, I did it, yeah, I did it to myself, uh, in my, like alone in my apartment, in, like, you know, in the bathroom mirror. I basically covered over everything except for the eyes, and then covered one eye, and then sort of figured out where everything was and covered the other eye. Um, that would have been fun. Uh, yeah, I, it, I would not recommend it. If you're really interested, I, I wrote an article for it for our, our club newsletter many years ago. I could Feel probably, free to take tons of pictures, if, guys. If, if, you, like, if you give me your email, I could probably send you the link to the article that I wrote. Um, but yeah, I would, I, in general, I would not recommend it. Uh, yeah, and we're, it's like, technically, if, if all you want is a Klingon forehead, you don't really need the whole head. Uh, but if you're going to do it, if you're going to go through the process anyway, you might as well you know, get, get a whole head out of the way just in case you want to do something bigger and more elaborate later. Um, I'd love to get that article. I've, yeah, I, I'll, yeah, you, I'll, give me your email later and I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Uh, I have done a few, like, I actually had uh, another cast of myself done all the way down here because I once did a uh, Cardassian prosthetic, so I made a Cardassian neck prosthetic. Cool. Okay, so I've done sort of a, a good line all the way across the top and around the back of his neck, and now I'm just going to fill in the whole back of the head. So we're going to do several layers, you know, in both directions. So one layer horizontally, one layer vertically. Um, and, and because for wondering, I, yes, it is actually starting to harden. Yeah, even already, it's, it's the first few strips are starting. Uh, so by the time we get the last layer on, the inside layer is already probably going to be mostly dry. Well, mostly hard. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If people hard. want to come around and take come photos, yep. feel free. Uh, you'll be able to see better once I get to the, to the front half, obviously. Um, once I finish the back half and while we're waiting for it to set, and I have a couple of minutes, I'm just going to wipe my hands and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the other sort of stages of the process. Uh, I'm trying to quickly sort of get that in while we're waiting for the back half to set. This is generally, this is a lot easier to do 
either if I bet I get somebody else to do the bandaging while I do the talking, or if we have a longer time, because it's really hard to get the whole process in in a one-hour panel. Um, I believe in you. While I'm bandaging and talking, <laughs> and it's kind of hard for me to sort of hold up other like like the bits from the other other parts of the process while I've got my hands in a bucket of water. Um, but I'm going to work as fast as I can here. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got anything scheduled in this room immediately afterwards. But oh, yeah. they can wait. <laughs> well, we'll send the gargoyles out. I'll just walk up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you want to sort of squeeze a lot of the excess water out of there so it's not too drippy. What do you do when you get around to the nose and the lips? Oh, we'll get to that, but basically you cut smaller pieces. Uh, so, you know, we, we cover over the eyes completely, we cover over the mouth completely, and we just, I, I, I generally work with like some pieces that are like just this big around the edges of the nostrils, leave the nostrils open. Um, there are techniques to get a slightly more accurate mold that involves something called alginate, which is a sort of a goopy product. If any of you have ever had a cast, like those of you who have had orthodontic work done have probably had a cast taken of your teeth at the yep. dentist. That goopy stuff that they put in that little tray and it's shoved in your mouth, that you that's, on? that stuff. Yeah, that is alginate. Um, and it's pretty much the same stuff that the makeup people use. And they goop it over the person's face and then put a, a plaster bandage thing over that to hold its shape. Because uh, the, the alginate, when they peel it off, it'll just flop, right? So it needs a harder shell on the outside. But, but if, you, if you're going to do something with alginate, then you have to actually like put straws in the person's nostrils so that it, because it sort of flows. So you want to make sure that it doesn't flow across their nostrils. Um, but the bandages, just you can just work around the edges of the nostril with it and not worry about straws. Straws, you kind of have to be careful not to change the shape of the person's nostrils when you put them in. So, you know. Okay, we're almost across. Be good at snorkeling both your face <laughs> up. <off. Just laughs> yeah. Go for a swim. Okay, so we're almost covered everything in this a little hole there, but that's okay because now I'm going to start putting things in the other direction. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about this plaster stuff is if you're doing this at home, uh, this water, you don't want to dump this down the drain uh, because you don't, the last thing you want is plaster dust in your plumbing. Uh, so this has to, has to, like ideally if you live someplace that's got a yard or a garden, like not an apartment, then you want to like dump this in the backyard. Uh, and you can like, you know, rinse out the bucket, whatever, rinse your hands or whatever, and then dump it in the, in the, the garden again, uh, rather than down the drain. Like a little bit like this much, that's probably fine. But like, the whole bucket, it develops a whole lot of the plaster dust at the bottom of the bucket. You don't want to dump that down your plumbing or you will need new plumbing eventually. Uh, you got a there you go, yeah. Uh, so like, I currently do live in an apartment building, so if I was to do this on my balcony, I would have to take this bucket like downstairs in the elevator and dump it in the yard. Uh, off the or off the balcony, I suppose. Uh, the neighbors might disapprove. I'm on the sixth floor, so you know. But yeah, it's just, these are sort of little things you have to be aware of and that you don't want to have to find out for yourself. <laughs> uh, another thing I'll also mention, like, we, we, I'm, I'm going to try and put several layers on here so it ends up being good and solid, but at the end, after you take it off, uh, if, you find, if you think that there are sections that are not solid enough, so long as it's enough to keep its shape while we get it off of his head, then after we've taken it off of him, uh, we can always add more layers to the outside and reinforce it. Uh, because one thing we, we are going to have to, once we've taken it off of him, we are going to have to put the two halves back together uh, and we're going to have to close off those nostril holes uh, be just cut it before we fill it with plaster. So, well, here, now I, okay, I'm pretty much done. Actually, I've got to have to cover the top half a little more. So I'm almost done with the top half, with the back half, I should say. Um, once this back half, once I'm done with this back half, we're going to wait five or ten minutes until it more or less sets. And then I'm going to use that same cocoa butter and grease a good inch or two around the edge of this back half and lay, start laying the front half on overlapping a little bit. 
So that's another reason why it's good to have a good thick edge here so there's a good sort of lip so you can, so the two, one shelf's inside the other. Let's see. So when we're ready for that, we'll start the top, the front half, and it'll be a little more clear what I'm talking about. Do you use the mannequin actually feel that it's starting to hurt? Yeah, it is. It's really unusual, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's not too bad. It's just basically like if you put a helmet on your head and just, you know, for hearing, yeah. so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's like it's blocking his ears, so he's not going to be able to hear as well. Um, before we start, like, hiding his, his actual face, it's a good idea to make sure that the person's okay, that they're not claustrophobic, and to develop some sort of hand signals. It's like, generally, it's, you okay? This is good. You know, this is bad. It's like, well, no, it's like, if, if, can you breathe? If the answer is no, this is the symbol for choking. So if he reaches up to his neck and goes, oh, that means get this thing the hell off of me. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe. Your answer would be, well, can you wait a few more? But I mean, see, it's like, the, the thing is, it's like, how much do you want this done and how much are you willing to put up with? Because if you're uncomfortable, but you don't want to have to start all over again from scratch, and you can sort of, you know, power through it. Then it's best not to have to tear it off prematurely, um, or you're going to have to, as I said, have to start from scratch. Okay, that's the last one for now. Okay, um, I think we might be. Have we gone through more than half the figures? So. Okay, so you think that's going to be enough for the front half? Um, okay. Where's the other? Uh, it's over here. It's okay. I'll just, it's, it's in plastic. Oh, and I think the other, that's the other bald cap. There we go. That's where it went. I, bought, I got two bald caps while I was there just to be on the safe side. But, of course, I lost the vassal. So, yeah. All right. So, there we go. He's good and smooth there. Uh, I didn't No, We only have one towel, and it's the one that he's sitting on. So, I'm just going to... This is an old shower curtain that I don't care too much about. Uh, and the, this plastic that we're sitting on is we had a couch delivered not long ago, and this is what was wrapped in. So, so yeah, you want to like generally you do it in, in your kitchen or somewhere that's got a tile floor, and you don't necessarily need to put down a ground sheet. You can you know, mop it up, and it's, it'll be fine. You might want to put a, put one down anyway. Old shower curtains really work well for this sort of thing. Okay, so we're just going to leave him sit for a, a couple of minutes. So. Uh, I really quickly zoomed through the whole process. Uh, let me just do it in a little more detail. So once we get we get the two two halves of, two halves off of him, and he'll he'll go clean up. And the first thing we want to do is make sure the two halves fit back fit back together again nicely. Uh, and then ideally, like I may not do it today because we might be rushed, but ideally, while you're still working with the bandages, you cover over the nostril holes, you reinforce reinforce any thin spots. And you can use some of the same class of bandages to uh, put the basically stick the two halves back together. You put two halves back together, you put some bandages across the seat on the other side. Uh, you can do that part with just duct tape, and I have done that before. Just like, <coughs> because you want to, what you really want to do is you're going to want to grease the inside of this plaster mold before you put the, the plaster in. Um, so it's easier to do that while it's in two halves and then put the two halves together. So you might want to like do that at a later date after you've cleaned up all this bandage mess. Uh, in which case, you can just put the two halves together with duct tape. Um, you grease up the uh, the, two, the inside of the two halves. I use Vaseline. Um, theoretically, uh, Vaseline is an oil-based product. It does, uh, if you use too much of it, it can uh, weaken the, the stone like the, the plaster that it's made of. You want to be very careful to put a thin coat on. I've never had a particular problem. If you're concerned about it, you can use more of an oil based, uh, sort of more of a water based lubricant like, like a KY um, or something like that, but whatever. Are there uh, the spray? Can you get the spray? With uh, you can use, like, there are spray, like, there are special um, sealers and things like that that are used for this purpose for mold making. But if you can buy it in a drugstore, that's, that's the easiest and cheapest for fancy. So I just, like I said, I just use acid. So you grease up the inside of the bowl, stick the two halves together, somehow attach, like attach the two halves together with tape or whatever, or more of a bandage. Um, and you put it upside down in a container that's about the size of the head. Um, ideally, you support, like, when I, when I first learned this process, what they said was, you, once you put it upside down, you fill the space between 
the outside of the, the shell head and the inside of the box or whatever, we have something like kitty litter, something like something that you can pour that sort of fills up that space and will keep it keep its shape. I usually like if I make this plaster cast strong enough, I usually don't bother doing like I could crumple up some newspapers or something like that, but usually it's fine if it's in, if it's fairly self-contained. Uh, then you mix up some of this stuff. What I use for this is uh, something called Durabond 90. Um, it's basically it's a it's a kind of a joint compound that they use for drywalling and that sort of thing. Um, you can use plaster of Paris. Uh, what I find with plaster of Paris is that it's harder to work with because plaster of Paris, when you mix it to the appropriate, to the, when you mix it to the right consistency that you're supposed to do, it's quite liquidy. It's like pancake batter, uh, and that, that makes it a little bit harder to work with. This stuff, when you mix it to the right consistency, is more like cake frosting. Uh, so it, it's thicker, it's goopier, like floppier. You can actually get it to stay put better, and that's it's not so much of an issue when you make this part. When you actually when, when you're actually pouring the negative over it, you want something thicker because otherwise it'll just run right off. Uh, so yeah, I use Durabon 90. It comes in like 20, 25, 20 to 25 pounds.